Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use FreedCamp, which is the project management system we're going to be using throughout the duration of your project. And we're going to be using it instead of email and instead of basically a lot of other things because it puts everything in one place. Now, the very first thing you're actually going to do is check your email. I've sent you an invite that's going to look something like this. All you need to do is click accept invitation and it will take you to a page that looks something like this. It'll pre-fill your email. Then you just need to put in your information and a password and click agree to the terms and conditions and then click register. Now you can also, if you don't want to make a new account, you can log in with Facebook or Twitter, or Google Plus or LinkedIn if you would prefer. Then you click register. And if you want, you can go ahead and upload a photo or take a photo with your webcam. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is set your time zone to whatever time zone you're in. I'm in mountain time, but you should just set it to whatever time zone you happen to be in. And then when you're done with that, go ahead and click next and you'll be taken to the dashboard. Now, once you're on this page, you'll likely get these project uh, little tips that pop up that will help walk you through how to use FreedCamp in case you need a little bit more in this video. I'm going to um, turn these off during the video, but feel free to leave them on and they'll help direct you and tell you what things are. Now you'll see any projects you've been invited to here on your dashboard. And in this case, there's only the one and you can see that I'm um, in this project and then this would be you. So if you had uploaded a photo, you would see your photo and your name here. Now, once you log into FreeCamp or once you get into that project, you're going to see a to do list. And as you can see, it's got quite a few things on here and I've only uploaded a few things or added a few things to this list, um, just as an example, but you can see what is assigned to you. So client T in this example is your name and Aaron EF is me. That's my name. And it will show you the due date as well. Now you may notice that things are out of order. And so what we want to do is probably is sort them by due date instead of alphabetical. So, so from this little drop down, you can go due date from due soon to due later. And I'm going to zoom my screen in a little bit just to make things a little bit easier for you to see. Okay. So this was what I used up here. So I changed the alphabetical listing to the due date on the task list, which now makes a little bit more sense. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is uploading content and images. So in this example, I have the project set to basically start um, at the beginning of October, which means everything needs to be uploaded by the end of September. So everything's basically due September 30th. So that includes the content, the images, filling out the design questionnaire and making a Pinterest board. Now, when you start something, you can click the little button here. And when it's yellow, that shows that it's in progress. And if you click it again, it will complete it. It will turn green and cross it off and show the date that you completed that. And the great thing is, is that FreeCamp will email me and let me know that you've completed your tasks. And likewise, when I check something off, you'll get an email summary letting you know that I have completed tasks. So we're both in the loop without having to email each other and say, oh, hey, I finished that thing. So. On this to-do list, just feel free to look at the dates and they will turn different colors um, once they are past due, but this would be uh, the basic place to get started. Now, if you want to give more information on these, there are little comments that you can leave. So if you wanted to write down here and say, um, Pinterest board is complete. Here is the link then you can click add comment at the bottom and I will be notified, which is pretty fantastic because then everything stays right in the proper place and is easy to find in the future. Now, if you want to start a discussion, obviously you can ask questions within the task list, kind of like we've done here. If you had a question instead about creating a Pinterest board and you said, Hey, should I make this private? Should I make this public? What's the best way to do this? I can answer right within the task list. But if you have other questions that don't fall within tasks, or you just want to start a discussion, you can create discussions here. Now, while we're working together, please put each question or each 
comment in a different discussion so that they're easy to find. So for example, if you want to ask about the Pinterest board, you can start a discussion called questions about the Pinterest board. And then if you want to ask questions about um, how to give feedback, then say questions about how to give feedback as a discussion. And in that way, everything can stay neatly organized. But you can start a new discussion. Let me show you where that was again. You can click add discussion up here in the corner. And then you can title this. Um, you'll have to excuse me, I'm trying to type around my microphone. Um, let's say, should I set the Pinterest board to public or private? Now, you don't need to worry about making it sticky or selecting private, and you can select to notify me here, which will send me an email right away. If you want to attach a file, then you can click browse files or simply drag and drop a file right here. If you really want to do a lot of formatting, you actually can. You can make things pretty fancy in this little editor. You don't need to, but if there's something um, that makes sense <laughs> to make fancy, you can. You can add in links, you can make things bold, you can do bullet points. So then just go ahead and click submit and then this will show in the discussions listing. Um, and I will be able to comment on it and we'll be able to keep that as one single thread, which will keep all of the comments and all of the questions organized. Now, finally, I'm gonna show you how to upload files so when you're giving me your content or you're giving me your images, you can simply go to the files tab and you can click upload. Now you can put things in folders if you want. So let's say we do a folder and we call it um, text content. We don't really need to do a description if the folder name makes sense, but you can if you want. And then within this folder, we can upload files. So that's pretty simple. So we're in the files tab and then we click on the folder and then we can simply upload files here by clicking the upload button. And I'm gonna browse some files and we'll grab a, a Word document right here and click open. And then of course you can notify me and then just click save. And now we have this Word document in the text content folder that's in the files tab. So that keeps everything really nice and organized. So you can also add, you know, folders for more things that you wanna upload, or I may add some folders to keep things organized throughout our project. But as you can see, uploading files is really, really simple. Now that's the basic rundown. Um, in our case, we're not really going to worry too much about the calendar. It will post when things are due. So if you want to look at the calendar and see when the tasks are due, then you can check that out. But otherwise, we're not going to use it too much. Um, there's nothing like new and separate on the calendar that's not on the tasks list or in the discussions. So you can use it if you want to, or you can simply go to the task list and see when things are due here, which is the way I work. So that's a quick run through with FreedCamp. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to ask me and I'm happy to walk you through it and make sure everything makes sense. Thanks for watching.